Now today we'll be showing on how to test and replace an in-car temperature sensor. Now this may be faulty, for example, you turn on your heater to the highest setting and you're not getting a lot of heat out of the vent. Same with the AC system. This little guy samples the cabin air inside the vehicle. And if it's faulty, then it can't take an accurate reading and the system won't work correctly. So that being said, let me show you where it's located inside the vehicle, how to remove it, and we'll quickly see if this is working correctly. Now the first step is just locating where the sensor lives. Now typically if you take a look at your HVAC or your heating and air conditioning controls, to the left of it, or sometimes in this case, it's below the steering wheel and toward the bottom, you'll find an opening in the plastic panel. This is what you want to look for. Again, in this case, it's toward the bottom uh, right of the steering wheel. Sometimes it'll be in this area. But once you find where the opening is, you have to peel back or remove the plastic panel. So we'll do that right now. To help you, it's always a good idea to have a trim removal kit. You can typically pick these up for around $10, $12, Amazon, local auto parts store. They all have them. Makes things a lot easier. And this is what the inside of that tool kit looks like. Gives you a number of different tools, sizes, and thicknesses to help you remove this. Now, Sometimes I just like to try. There we go. Now this is just held in. I'll come in for a close-up in a moment, but just very, very strong clips holds everything in place. And as you can see, just very strong clips essentially holds everything in place. So just be a little gentle. You have to sometimes nudge it. But again, don't be afraid to use some of these tools because it does help. Let's get the other side off here so we can peel this down. Now on the right-hand side here, I'm just using one of these tools to help me is hurting my fingers so use the tool as much as you can some of these clips can be incredibly strong really really strong okay and then once I pull a little bit on the bottom this is where the sensor lives right down here okay and just to give you a different angle this is what we're looking at now so right here where my middle finger is I'm pressing on the back of the tab and pulling out and that's it now sometimes you may find this uh, aspirator hose still hooked up to the sensor if, if that's the case just slightly push or pull back this hose and that's it so we'll bring this in the house and I'll show you on how you can test this the other thing is take take a look at the hose make sure that it's not clogged if this is clogged sometimes with dust and debris then your HVAC system won't work correctly in terms of getting the right temperature so just make sure you take a look at that so first I'm just going to remove the sensor in this case it's just held by two Phillips size screws easy enough and then uh, we'll test it Now in order to test the sensor, you need a digital multimeter. Now you can typically pick these up for roughly $25. Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, for example, do sell these. Now as you can see, there's a number of different functions on the multimeter. In this case, we just need to do a resistance or an ohms test. So you want to look for the omega symbol on the multimeter, okay? So once you're on the ohms setting, you have two leads coming from the multimeter. You're just taking these leads and you're touching the prongs on the back of the sensor. So for example, if I take, let's start with the black lead. Now it does not matter which color touches which prong. You can place this on the left side or the right side, does not make a difference. Resistance test, it doesn't matter. So I'll place the black lead on the left prong and I'll free up my hands in a moment so you guys can get a better view on how we'll test this. And then the right where the red will touch the right prong. We should see a reading, which we do, so that's a good sign. So in this case, 2.2 kilo ohms. Now, the way that we test this, I'm going to apply heat on it. I'll use a hair dryer. And as this heats up, that number should decrease. Now, to help you do this, I'm going to use these alligator clips. I'll place them over the end of these prongs, we'll hook up the multimeter to them, and then we'll take a reading as we 
heat up the sensor with a hair dryer, okay? Now, if you have someone else helping you, obviously you can do this, whoops, without the alligator clips, but okay, so 2.2 .2 roughly kilo ohms. Let's grab a hair dryer, and this number should decrease as it warms up. There you go. So if we remove the heat, then the number should increase. And it does. So this sensor is working perfectly, perfectly fine. So as you can see, very, very easy, something you can do rather quickly. I would say the hardest part sometimes is just removing those interior, interior panels. Use a uh, tool set like I showed earlier. It makes a big, big help, well worth the $10, $12 investment.